Hey space fans, Tarek Malik, editor-in-chief of space.com here at NASA's Kennedy Space Center with a very special guest, uh, possible, hopeful, future moonwalker, uh, astronaut Anne McLean. We're gonna talk about going to the moon. Um, Lieutenant Colonel, uh, great to see you. Thanks for having the time. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for telling the story. Thanks for being here at Kennedy Space Center for this launch. So we're, we're here to talk about Artemis One, and of course Artemis program in particular, uh, NASA wants to go back to the moon. Why? Should we be going back to the moon in the first place? Sure. So NASA and its international partners are very focused on exploration. And what that simply means is going to places we've never been before and learning things we've never learned before. And so a lot of people will say, well, we did go to the moon. Well, we went to a very different part of the moon. Imagine landing on one part of the Earth and thinking that you've seen it all. Okay, so we're going to go to different parts of the moon. We're going to develop new technologies, test new technologies. We're going to go deeper in space than humans have ever gone. And all of this um, in anticipation of our next steps in exploration, which could include Mars. So, uh, you know, what, um, in terms of like the, the, the South Pole of the Moon, where Artemis astronauts hope to uh, explore, um, what, what can we learn there that Neil Armstrong and, and the other Apollo astronauts didn't get a chance to look at there? What's really unique about that place? Sure. Well, just, just a successful landing on the South Pole of the Moon is not a trivial task. It requires... Um, a lot of different, uh, it requires a different approach, different systems um, to get there. So just landing is, is part of it. Once we're on the south pole, uh, pole of the moon, um, then the lighting conditions are different. So it's we have dark regions, we have light regions. So we'll be able to actually explore some of the dark side of the moon that we haven't and we haven't seen with human eyes yet. Um, and there's possible energy sources that we could we use in the future. Um, so for instance, water or ice, um, you know, hydrogen and oxygen that um, that we could that could uh, support a sustainable presence. Yeah, you've launched into space before. You've been in space for a long time on the International Space Station, but we're watching uh, the Artemis program launch a brand new rocket, a brand new spacecraft into space. What are you as an astronaut hoping to see, uh, aside from, I guess, uh, a successful launch <laughs> for, for, the, for Artemis 1 uh, uh, on this mission? Yeah, so um, not only just watching the, I mean, getting to watch the launch is, um, is kind of icing on the cake. Uh, it's going to be an incredible launch. But really what we're doing is testing all the systems so that in Artemis 2 we can safely put astronauts on it. So as crew member, what I'm looking at is, is the results of the test, um, the, the check on health on the whole rocket, on the Orion space capsule, on the mannequins that are sitting <laughs> inside, uh, see what they're going to go through in radiation and G-forces. Um, and so it's a really big uh, data point on this very long test campaign. And then as an astronaut, knowing that you're training to go, I mean, you've, you've flown on the International Space Station, that was a very long mission, longer uh, than, of course, the Apollo astronauts had, longer than what an, 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 an Artemis mission may last. I think NASA was saying something like 10 days for those initial missions. Um, uh, I'm just wondering what you think about the chance of getting to walk on the moon and, and you know, set up a home base that would then lead to Mars. Yeah, absolutely. I love the creativity of the Artemis missions. Um, that's something that's really exciting to me. If you, if you look at the Artemis campaign, each mission is increasingly complex. It has new tasks that we've never done before, but we're building up mission by mission by mission. So you mentioned that about the 10 days, right? So the early missions, we're not going to land on the moon on Artemis too, right? We're going to retest all those systems on the Orion. And then we're going to land for a short period of time. And then each mission is going to be something different. And so we often get asked like about being the first person on the moon. And we're going, well, but maybe Artemis 5 or 6 is going to be, you know, maybe I want to put the tent up on the moon. Maybe I want to do this. <laughs> so there's no bad Artemis missions. But I think it's exciting because each mission is going to have a huge dose of creativity. And creativity to us at NASA is a very organized and scientific approach to answering questions that we haven't even asked before. And that's what this Artemis mission is about. You, you mentioned Mars earlier as kind of like a, a stretch goal. Uh, if you will, and, and I'm wondering about that that goal itself too. What is it that makes that a tantalizing next step after Artemis uh, gets that base camp set up around the moon? Yeah, so when we talk about these really long-term big missions like Mars, we as humankind, I think each of us have to ask ourselves that question. So to me, it's as interesting what drives you to Mars as it does drives me, because it's going to be something different for every human. But since the beginning of time, humans have a propensity to explore. It's just in our blood and it's in our culture. And when a culture can support exploration and we have arts and sciences and exploration and get asking ourselves that curiosity of what's around that next corner. So part of it is just that natural human instinct we have to explore. And maybe for you, it's telling that amazing story. Maybe because in hundreds of years, people are gonna be looking at your words and your videos and, and hearing that story. And for me, you know, I'm an engineer, so I like the technical side. What are the new things that we're gonna develop in order to enable that mission? We have planetary geologists that want that would do anything for a little bit of that <laughs> soil on there, right? Um, and so I, I think it's really exciting that every human can can identify with a different part of that mission. 
Great. Well, you know, those are my main questions, but you know, first we gotta see the, the, the space launch system launch. I'm just wondering what your final thoughts are just as we, we, we get ready for that mission and hopefully the, the ones to follow after. Yeah, so as we're getting ready for to watch Artemis 1 launch, um, I, I have this mix between uh, being super excited, um, pinching myself and realizing <laughs> that we're part of history. There's a big realism for us in our in our office. You know, a successful test flight here means that, uh, no kidding, we're going to need to put people on there. And that's a responsibility that we take very, very seriously. And so, um, uh, you know, in the test community, as a test pilot, I used to say, you know, emotions don't help um, in a mission. And so I think when we have a successful Artemis One mission, um, to us, it's, it's not about excitement anymore now, it's about pre preparation. We have to prepare each other, we have to identify the skills that, well, we've already identified a lot of the skills that we need and we've already started training, um, but we've got to seriously put our head down and understand the gravity, <laughs> no pun intended, <laughs> of the responsibility placed on our shoulder and make sure that we're ready. Great. Well, you know, all, all, uh, all, all the best to you <laughs> as you train to go to the moon and hopefully beyond, uh, and we look forward to a, to a great mission. Thanks so much for your time today. Thank you.